The following is an interview with Professor Edie Shockley of Rutgers University, conducted by Lindsay Stewart at Penn State University as part of the 2012 National Endowment for the Humanities Summer Institute on Contemporary African American Literature. Well, Dr. Edie Shockley, we're very glad to have you here. So would you first tell us um, what you would describe as your approach to teaching African American literature? Um, it's an interesting question. I, uh, I feel like we're in a, a time where um, a lot of the, the hard work of setting up the tradition mm -hmm. has already been done. Um, and so I would say actually my approach to teaching African American literature as a tradition is to disrupt and, and trouble some of the, the kind of um, narratives of what the tradition is that have been established, not because that work wasn't important mm -hmm. or, or because it was wrong per se, but um, because even you know, within a, a new field or a newer field, one that's, um, that's it's self-disrupting a narrative about what American literature is, um, I think it's always important to to keep an idea of it being in flux and um, of it being multiple and, um, and varied um, before my students. And so I'm often setting up ideas about you know, the meaning of freedom or um, the, the meaning of blackness or um, you know, sort of the relationship of African descended people to America as a, as a nation, as a concept, those kinds of narratives that we have had in place about um, African-American literature, setting them up and then complicating them mm -hmm. with texts throughout the period, um, throughout the, the period that I teach, which is 20th century. Okay. Yeah. Um, do you think that your approach has changed over the years? Or did you start out with this sort of vision of teaching the tradition as more of a disruption? Or you know, I don't know if I've been teaching long enough yet to say that it's it's changed dramatically. What I hope is that I'm just getting better at doing <laughs> constantly learning, um, learning the sort of the foundational um, aspects of the tradition in order to situate newer um, newer texts and also newer approaches to um, texts from a more historical period. So what was your response to King Warren's proclamation that African American literature ended with the demise of legalized <laughs> segregation? Um, I don't buy the premise that it began with legalized segregation, okay. <laughs> so I don't, I don't buy the, the conclusion. It's, it's, a, it's an interesting and provocative book, um, and uh, but ultimately I, I find myself sort of struggling with how many insightful things he can um, articulate about African-American literature and arrive yet at the <laughs> conclusions that he does. I, uh, I am interested in thinking about African-American literature as um, work produced by African-Americans mm -hmm. and not as a project, as a political project mm -hmm. um, fundamentally, uh, I think. We, as a people, um, have interests beyond the political, even when so much of our literature is filtered through the political uh, of necessity often. Um, we have interests beyond the political in making art, and um, you know, Phyllis Wheatley does not predate African American literature, right. in my account of it, and um, as a poet, uh, publishing poet, I do not post-date African-American literature. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the question needs to be debunked, I guess. You know, I mean, there are those willing to debate it and entertain it, and I do think it's, um, it's really useful to have people thinking about um, the constitution of the tradition. I mean, some of the things that have functioned as as narratives about what the tradition is made of or uh, comprised of um, have, have problems within them. But um, my sense of, of it is that whatever answers or 
further conclusions we might draw about the extent, the breadth, the, the scope of the tradition, it won't be that uh, we'll find ourselves after it <laughs> at this point. Um, so what new trend or issue in African American literature um, interests you lately? Um, well, having already mentioned that I'm a poet, I will, I will confess to being very excited to see both, I think, in the production of African American literature and in the scholarship um, and teaching uh, a, a sort of a revival of interest in poetry. Mm -hmm. um, I came of age sort of as a reader and certainly um, as a scholar in a moment when um, African American novels, uh, in particular often when we think about black women's novels, the 80s um, and 90s, being um, really at the forefront of what people were interested in thinking about, talking about um, narrative studies really dominated the field when I was in graduate school in the late 90s. And so, um, um, but what I've seen in sort of the 21st century is a real return mm -hmm. to um, um, interest in poetry that, that comes a lot from students who are also um, who are gaining interest in it outside the academy initially through slams, through spoken word, right. Um, right. you know, deaf poetry on TV right. and so forth, um, and, 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 and encountering poetry in creative writing classes as well. And some of that um, that interest is is starting to shape what scholars are are working on and um, the popularity of classes and. So um, just carrying on with uh, your interest and stuff going on now and the kind of poetry that's going on, um, how important do you think it is to teach contemporary popular literature, um, including graphic novels, urban street, or hip-hop literature? No, that's interesting. Um, I think it's important for scholars of African American literature to teach whatever they're doing research in. Mm -hmm. um, and so, um, so I want the full breadth of, of what scholars are, are pursuing to be available at some level um, to cl the classes in undergraduate and graduate levels. Um, you know, that said, I, I don't myself often teach um, the contemporary um, sort of urban fiction, um, although, you know, I. Um, I'm, I, would, I would say I would be more likely to teach versions of poetry that, that correspond to those. Mm -hmm. um, often the, the poetry that is um, contemporary, popular, sort of extra academy, um, doesn't have some of the same problems that I um, personally have as a reader with um, um, gangster lit, street lit, uh, that kind of thing. Um, so it's, it's probably an easier, an easier thing for to embrace as a teacher on the poetry side. But what is clear to me is that um, things that are considered classics now in, say, Victorian literature, which is another area I uh, studied in graduate school, you know, Charles Dickens was a popular novelist in his day, and he's now a classic. And so um, it's, it's important to me that people are doing work with, looking at how these novels are um, being generated, what they mean to their target audiences, and um, and what we can learn about this moment, this you know long moment in African American culture, um, about uh, by by way of studying what those novels are doing and how they're doing it. And transitioning a little bit to just thinking about the institute, how did you prepare for your sessions? Um, because I'm, I'm here to talk about um, contemporary narratives of slavery, um, that's something I've been teaching all year, like this, this past fall, and uh, currently I'm teaching a summer school session mm -hmm. with a course on contemporary narratives of slavery. So um, basically, I've been preparing by just doing what I do. This is my, my current research project. And, um, um, 
it was a matter of sort of shifting gears a little bit and, and thinking about how to teach it to um, a slightly different audience. My fall semester course was undergraduates. The summer session I'm teaching now is master's students. Mm -hmm. And here I've got, you know, at the institute I've got uh, an audience or a, a student population, quote unquote, of teachers, mm -hmm. um, um, high co college level teachers and graduate students. And so I just think the conversation is going to be that much richer that much more um, stimulating for me. I, I hope to learn a lot um, to take back to my work. Okay, well, thank you for your time. You're welcome.